okay, I thought that there was something wrong, but there wasn't there wasn't anything wrong. Anyway, it was like like 40 minutes, so I think that it's good to split them up because I don't know if everybody wants to watch both of them at one time, but they could watch one later and this one, but both of them are important because it's going to explain this one. Now I'm going to go back about the guy that I just explained about the last um YouTube about the last video I just turned off just now so anyway I met the guy and I told you that everything was just really fine and dandy and I really liked him a lot but I told you you know that he wanted the only thing I didn't like was the fact that he wanted to do sex toys I mean it was a legal business it wasn't anything bad or anything but he was just interested he did little businesses you know like i said it'd be, it was before the internet or anything nice person he was relationship person and that's the type of person i was he wasn't like sexual person i mean you know sexual when you're in a relationship and that's the type of person i am so anyway um so um so anyway, like I said, and then I was, okay, I was telling you about the medication. I have to say about the medication because I, I was on the medication when I met him. Now, the, and I explained to you about the medication in the first one about the um, panic attacks. He gave, the, doc, the psychiatrist gave me this medication. It was like a, um, I said to begin with a D. I don't know what kind of medication, but it slowed me down. I mean, it was just, he also told me you don't want to take it a long time because it, it um, will affect your liver. So he knew that it was a temporary medication. He also said, I told him that I drank beer. Now I don't drink anything. But, um, and he goes, yeah, beer would be good. Beer is good. <laughs> you know, it's good to drink beer, he was telling me. <laughs> so, um. So anyway, I did took the medication, and like I told you, he even, I only saw the psychiatrist once, but he did prescribe to me the medication, and he did tell me about the side effects. It was like, you know, he was like telling me, this should help you temporarily through this thing that happened. So anyway, when I was on the medic, I would take the medication, okay, or... Yeah, I would take, I would still take the medication. I think I was taking the medication with the guy. I'm almost positive. Yeah, because I was having the panic attacks. But I didn't know that they were panic attacks. That's funny. I think, okay, so I don't know. It's going to come out why I didn't know there were panic attacks. Like I said, I didn't know that they were panic attacks I was having. But, um, but anyway, so anyway, I'm going back to this guy that I was dating. So, he took me out to dinner to a really nice restaurant. And I remember sitting in the restaurant, very nice. And I remember like so many panic. It was like constantly trying to conceal the fact that I was having panic attacks. It was just tremendous of the things that I was doing not to have a panic attack. And then I would say I had to go to the bathroom. And I would go to the bathroom and like spill out this panic attack. And then I would come back as if nothing happened. But he was really nice. And I wish I would have told him. But I didn't even, at that point, I'm almost sure I didn't even know it was a panic attack. I just, I'm almost sure I didn't tell him that. I don't know. Because if something happened with him that I, that made me understand that it was a panic attack. Because I remember we were in his house. We were in his, he had like his apartment. We went to his apartment and I was on the floor in the living room because we sit on the floor in the living room and watch TV or something. And I had to, I was like getting mad, back to back panic attacks. And I ran, I went to the bathroom. I remember I was having panic attacks. And I was taking the medication, yeah. I was taking the medication because I remember I had the panic attack. And I think when I had to protect panic attack, I would take the medication or something like that. I'm not sure. But I remember not being able to hide it at that point. And I told him that I'm having panic attacks. You know, no, I, I told him about, I told him about something. And I think he said, you're having panic attacks. And... He didn't realize that I didn't know there was panic attacks. 
Okay, I think the doctor was saying anxiety or something like that. I don't know, but I didn't know. I went to psychiatrist. Oh, I, I went to psychiatrist. The psychiatrist never said anything about be, having panic attacks. He would not say that. And that's one thing I noticed that they did is they never, they never stated anything unless they knew. Like they would never say these people were good because they wouldn't say panic attacks. They wouldn't say anything unless they knew 100% what it was. So I'm almost sure that's why they never said panic attacks because um, they were just that, that trained. But when I was with my friend, he was like, you're having panic attacks. And I go, what? It made me feel so much better when I realized, oh, it's a panic attack. You know what I mean? Then I'm almost sure I had a handle on it, you know? Okay. But then after that, he says, you should have told me that you were having panic attacks. Why did you hide it? I didn't say anything, but I didn't, I didn't even know there were panic attacks. But anyway, that relationship, that's where I figured out that I was having panic attacks. And I also remember another thing. Now it's getting broke up because, you know, I can't get the, um, the sequence of events. But as far as the medication is concerned, I, was remember, I remember when I was going for an interview. And at this point, I was going to, I was, I was taking a medication and I was seeing therapists, two therapists. One therapist was trying to... Um, analyzed me with this test he had a test and he would give me cards and tell me to what did I feel about this what did I feel about that and then the other one the other therapist was like telling me how to handle they wouldn't say panic attacks like I said I'm not sure they would say anxiety or anything they wouldn't say it unless they knew 100% what it was so they told me to relax they gave me relaxing um, um, things that I could do just little things to relax when this thing would happen, they would say. Okay, so that was another guy. So that was, I, the psychiatrist I only saw one time. Okay, and I'll explain about, and I'll finish off with him now. Okay, as far as he was concerned, I was going for an interview or a job interview or something. And my body was slow. The medication made me go like really, really slow. Slow. Think slow. Okay, and I remember wanting to do two things at once, and because of medication, and I, and because of the fact that I always did figures in my head, you know, always did practices in my head with the linguistics and stuff, that I could see that I wanted to do two things at once. I wanted to go to the train station and do this other thing at the same time. And I said to myself, I can't do that. I could see at that point that I solved one of my problems because of the medication, because the medication made me even go think even slower. So um, I saw that and I said, that's my problem right there. So um, I saw that and I stopped doing two things at once. And I said, I got it. I can't like grab it was like grabbing two things at once or whatever and then that would trigger this attack okay so then when I figured that I could stop taking the medication I stopped taking the medication as soon as I figured out that I had I had the ability not everybody has the ability but I had the ability to slow down myself and not do, try and do two things at once. It was like trying to split your body in half, go here and go there. So that helped me and I was able to not take the medication again, but I was still having back-to-back -back panic attacks. You know, it kind of subsided a little bit. But <clears throat> another thing that helped me as far as the panic attacks, and this is ending the, the panic attack thing, I stopped seeing a guy who I was seeing like I told you, he took me to dinner and he was really nice and doing his sex toys and stuff like that. Um, I remember being in um, Central Park. And Central Park is a park where gays meet, yes, but it's more, it's not like other parks. I mean, as far as Central Park, there's other parks that are very highly sexual and stuff like that. But the one in Manhattan was 
not as sexual because you would talk to a lot of people. You would really just meet them. I mean, there was things going on, but it was a, a greater percent of people would talk to each other and things like that. Because I remember meeting one guy who was Mexico and the other guy I was telling you about, he was white, very nice person. This one's from Mexico and he saw, met me at a, par a park, but I was having panic attacks. And I remember him taking one look at me and saying, I'm going to take care of you. And then he put his hand on my, like right here, on my chest or whatever. Almost like he was going to take care of me. I mean, I'm not talking about anything sexual. I'm talking about as a person. And we became, like I said, I was a relationship. And we got into a relationship after that. And he was really something else. And, and he introduced me to his family and everything. And I started working with him. <clears throat> so that's the end of story of the panic attacks. Okay. Now I'm going to explain to you about the panic attack and how it may help my 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 condition with the panic attack how it can help with this dance without music or in life okay now when you do dance without music <clears throat> it's a lot of information okay a lot of things happen they call a past they call a past present and future okay and this is how it's helped me as far as knowing about the panic attacks when you're learning a lot of things, like what I was doing at the, um, when I was doing in the room, okay, I formed a curriculum, okay, um, I should have realized that I was doing something that was going to affect me, okay. After I finished doing a system of things, as far as even when you do dance without music, you do a system of things. You have to realize, you have to realize that you did something. You obtained knowledge. So that's your past. And you have to leave it. Or you have to do a certain amount and then cut it. If you continually build that past, I mean, what I'm saying, it goes into past. Like you learn all these things. Even when you go to school, you have to no. Forget about school because it's totally different. You're learning all this new things. Then you have to cut it off. Once you cut it off, it becomes past, okay? It's still going to affect you, okay? So you, so you cut it off at a good time. Because if you overflow it, it's going to affect you too much. So this is what I learned from the panic attack. Take it, get as much as you think you can handle... Don't overflow it. Let it go. And now it's in your past, okay? Because it's going to come back up, the effect. Then you relax. Live in your present. Enjoy yourself. Um, watch TV, relax, or whatever. You're in your present, okay? When I was in my present back then, I would still do try and add on things even though this effect is going to happen to me but that's not the way to do it let it go enjoy your present like you have to do eat drink sleep do all those things that you have to do now you're in your present you're doing it the right way then in your future this thing once it's developed the 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 information that you got it's going to come inside it's going to alert you in your, I hope you're catching on. It's going to alert you in your present. <clears throat> I mean, you're going to be doing whatever you have to do. And then it's going to go like, boom. Okay. This is what I have. Okay. You're going to see it. Okay. Okay. And if you did too much, you're going to see too much. Okay. But like I'm saying, I'm telling you all of this because I've been through it and it's to help you out. So then your past is going to it's going to come face to face with you. Then it ha it has to process. That's what you call the processing, okay? If you know what you've already done, you're just going to let it process. There's nothing you can do. So, I'm saying if you process if you did too much that in that past, the processing is going could, I mean, it's just going to annoy you, okay? It's going to annoy you, the processing.
But if you do it the way I do it, that's why I put years on it so that you can handle it because you have to have, you have to live in your present. So then you're going to take that information. You're going to know that it's processing. Back then when I had, before I had the panic attacks, when I was getting ready to have panic attacks, I saw it and I didn't even see it. I didn't even know what was happening. But now I'm telling you, when you're living in your present, it's going to come back to you and you're go it's going to process. It's going to process. After it's finished processing and you have to live through the processing, if you do it the right way, you won't even know. You know that it's processing, but it won't bug you. Okay? <clears throat> then after it's processed, you could lose it. Okay? This is called your future. It's taking care of your future. Once it's finished processing, you got to realize it's finished processing. And the way I do it, if you start from the beginning, you'll see each step, okay? Because I'm going to try and add this. I think I can add this. Because, like I said, if you start, okay, and I'm going to add this, and I'm going to end up with the future, how it does your future. So what I'm trying to say, if you start at the beginning, you'll see the little processing, how it works much better to where you can build up. Because you're building up strength. To be stronger, not so things are easier. You're building up strength so you can handle more. It's that's the funny part. You keep building up strength, not to reach the easy part. You build up strength so that you can do something that's more powerful. Okay, so that's the pretty big part. Okay. So if you start at the beginning, you'll have, you'll see how the processing works, how the processing, how you do the study and how it starts processing. And then you'll see after the processing, which is the processing is the past. Okay. And then the processing, I mean, the studying is in the past and then it turns into the processing while you're living your life, you don't know when it's going to happen to where this processing is going to come up. Then you see the processing. This is if you start in the beginning, you'll see the processing. You'll catch on. But it'd be a little bit. And then after you process, it's going to come to a point to where you have something new. If you don't recognize that it's new, something is new, okay? And like I said, if you do it little by little, you'll catch on. You see the little things that are happening. And then you'll adapt and get the new information and use it. And then you can go to the next level. If you, if you start at the beginning, it'll be, you'll get the system down to where it's a small and then larger and then larger and then larger the way that you can handle it. If you start in the middle, the processing is going to kill you. It's going to be like killing you. I don't care. I mean, I don't know if it can, but it feel like that. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> now the future. That's the future. After the processing. It's going to process. Nothing you could do. Okay. Then while it's processing. After it finishes processing. It's going to come back in a package. And it's going to be. It's going to be something that you've worked on. Okay. And you could accept the package or else you could not deny it, but you could just like not know it's there. Okay. And um, you still have benefits. Usually you'll have benefits without you knowing it. But if you want to take full advantage, you'll know when the processing is over and you'll know when something new is coming. Okay. And that's the nice part is when you're when you built up so much to where you know when the new part that something is new in you and you can take advantage of it and you know where to start next but at the point that i'm at so that that finishes the future so the future is like you you got you obtained this ability to do something that you practice or something that you worked on or some knowledge that you worked on, you have that ability. Okay. And that's the future. Okay. Being able to see that and then use it. And then how can I use it? Okay. That's another thing that I was telling you about as far as um, premonition. I want to use premonition 
not in the light that everybody else uses it. I don't want to say vision because vision is too big. The reason why I want to use premonition and dance without music is because when you get that new thing back, you have like a premonition of what you can do now. Okay. So that's why I want to borrow that word for dance without music premonition. So that's pretty much it. But there's another thing too. One more point that I want to make is the fact when you have the processing or when you do the knowledge, this is going to be hard in the beginning, but to, because you're developing this. So when you do your practices and you're taking in your knowledge, it's going to be hard in the beginning, but you're actually seeing um, what you're doing. You're actually, you're taking in information that's vague. That's what I'm saying. And it, that, that'd be good for you to, that'd be a good point. Is that the first part, as far as the, the past, making the knowledge and then putting it in the past, is that you have to see how you're doing something, which is totally impossible in the beginning. That's why I give you those um, exercises to do. That's what you want to strengthen, but you can't strengthen it in the beginning. That's why I'm giving you how to take in the knowledge, okay? Now, as far as the panic attacks is concerned, is when the processing comes back. When the processing comes back is where the panic attacks come from, as far as I was concerned, okay? Because I can feel that something has happened, okay? Now I know that it's processing. But what I would do is when the processing would start, I would get nervous and scared. But if you separate it from yourself, the processing, and it could be, you could make a, a lot of times you'll make a mistake in taking too much knowledge and the processing will be really big. The best thing to do is not to have a panic attack, which most people won't. They'll understand, but I'm a fatalist. Um, I'll see the processing in front of me and now I don't. I'll see the processing in front of me and I can't, you know, and I used to not relax and think too much about the processing. But you got to separate. This is where now I handle, I handle the panic attack is I see the processing and I see myself and I see that it's something in the past that happened that I did. It's an effect from the past and you can do it with other things too. And I relax and I go, oh, I'm here and the processing is there and that will strengthen you from not having the panic attack. Seeing where the processing is and seeing what you're doing and who you are, okay? And that's the point I want to make as far as the processing is concerned. And then when the new thing comes in, that one is usually really nice, the new thing. You only have to realize it and then realize the thing that you were already working on and realize that you can do this or you can do that now. But the reason why you don't think about that one because it's so much fun. It's like, oh, wow, I can do this now or I can do that now. So anyway, that's the end of the panic attack. Thanks for hanging in there with me. And what we're going to start doing next, I've already did go on close to 200 hours on these YouTubes. I don't know when they're going to come out, but I'm going to do each one. We have one in mathematics, okay? Okay. Um, introduction to Mathematics, Dance Without Music, okay? I, I think I mentioned it. Introduction to Mathematics is, um, I, give you a little, I give you a little preview. It's going to be Mathematics Without Numbers, okay? And we call it extreme. We have five, which is an extreme, okay? <clears throat> we don't say one, two, we don't say um, one, two, three, four, five. You don't say that. You just utilize five in every sequence, in everything, okay? So you do, so instead of saying five, we say um, extreme, okay? So anything with five is extreme. And the most beautiful thing about 
the extreme and five i can say five now because this is a, i'm trying to like giving you some um preview it's like in five you have a beginning and you have an end or in and a beginning it could be this these two could be beginning or end these are the extremes so we don't count but i'm just saying you could say one two three four five or one two three four five but i don't use numbers because it's gonna it, it's it's gonna it's going to not diminish it's going to infuriate your ability to to do more utilize flexibly the utilize five or the extreme so one thing about five is that you have this side and this side so we don't use numbers <clears throat> And then, and we're going to use the extreme in everything. But in a five, you also, you have a center. Okay, so this is the center. This is five. This is the center. And then in a the center, you can divide this side and you can divide that side. So in five, you have, now we're going to call it the extreme. You have this side and this side. You have a center and then you have a center on either side. So that's a little preview, nice preview for um, introduction to dance, introduction to mathematics, dance without music. We're going to start working with power. It's going, once you just finish the experts, I think I'm going to go into power. Yes, it's real power. Okay. But we have to finish, um, we have to finish, uh, what's the name of it? Um, we have to finish force. And don't say forces that we're studying forces no force is one thing like look at my last youtube explain it all of my categories okay so don't say he's studying he's doing forces no force is just one thing okay i didn't make a topic on it yet it's only dance without music for now and so force is going to be one it's the last of three expert three and then after that, it's, I'm almost sure it's going to be power, okay? We're going to, with this extreme, remember the extreme, okay? We're going to utilize that in the introduction to dance. In the introduction to mathematics with dance without music is going to be all about the extreme, which is five. And then after that, I'm almost sure it's power. In power, we're going to have a, let me see if I could do this. In power, I'm going to try and do this, okay? <clears throat> so in power, we're going to have um, a sequence that we have to go on. This is power, okay? I'm going to explain to you about, we don't say feet, and I'm just previewing this. This is a while before, you, before we're going to get to this video. Um, we don't say feet. Like I said, we don't do any anatomy, but we call, we're going to call this like down here down here we're gonna call ground okay ground floor or earth okay so down here is ground ground earth or floor because of the fact that you can go down and then you can still face the same things you have to face with your feet so we don't use feet, we use ground because of the fact that the things that your feet goes through, if you're on the ground, you have to go through the same thing. So that's the concept. And that's going to be called power because we're going to go through a sequence. It's going to be called, um, it's something in mathematics, um, <clears throat> something completing, completing the square as far as dance without music is concerned. And what gives you the power is that there's many things in our feet. There's many things in our feet. Like I said, I'm not going to say any anatomy, but it's a tremendous amount of things in our feet. And I'm going to show you that when you're in the ground, like I said, just like the feet are at the ground, all the things you have to do to move and do what you want to do. All those same things that you do when you're on the ground, even I'm sitting here on, on the floor, um, all those things that I have to do, my feet has to conquer with just two small feet, 
Okay, like I said, I'm not going to say any anatomy. So when I stand, all the things I have to do with my power, I'll call it the power on the, um, on the, where my, uh, where the ground is, all those things, there's so many tremendous amount of things that has to be done, but we're going to complete the square. I know you don't catch it now, but I'm telling you it's ahead of time. It's going to be called, um, it's a key and it's a, uh, maneuvers that you have to do. Okay. And that's going to start what they call the power. It's going to be called power. I'm almost sure it's going to be called power because it's going to use utilize everything that we studied, everything that we went over in Dance Without Music, and it's going to... I, I, I never did the combinations like I told you, which is I'm on hold as far as the combinations. If you're following all of these things, I know I said combinations, and I didn't, I didn't do the combinations yet, but I still remember that. But this one is going to be completing the square. And I'll just give you some back, a little preview or, um, like I said, premonition. Like I said, we're going to take that word and borrow it, okay? Like, for instance, it's one, it's going to be something like completing the square. It's something like that. And you have to, something like, okay, let's see if I can do it. Okay, all those, this is a, that's just a quick example, but all those things are utilizing the things you have to do on the ground, the earth, or the floor. I have to say those because if I say bones or if I say feet, it's only one, it's only one thing, but I'm, I'm almost sure it's going to be power. I'm going to call it power. I'm not sure. But it's going to allow you to use all, utilize the abilities that we, there's no way in the world that we could use those abilities in our, in our, in our, I don't want to say feet, on our ground. Let's just say on our ground, on our floor, okay? I have to say that because then it's going to allow you to open up something new. If I say feet or if I say muscles or if I say bones, you're, you're not going to get it. It's going to hinder your ability to use it. I have to say ground. Like I said, if I'm talking about that area, I'm just saying ground because you have to do the same things if you're laying on the ground. Anyway, I hope you got the concept. Okay. That's going to be called completing the square. And if you utilize the things that you have to utilize when you're standing, I guess that's better to say, when you're standing, okay, it's going to be called power, okay, because it's a tremendous, it's things that you don't even know occur or you have abilities you don't even think that you have in that area on the ground, okay, so... And in, and one last point is that one is really, really monstrous because there's another thing when you start, when you continue to progress and dance without music, like I said, the more you go, the more you're going to have to get used to what happens when you develop things, when you develop like, I don't know, I can't say anatomy. When you develop certain things to do what you have to do, you'll notice that, oh, that is not really a pain. It's like something developing. You're going to have to get used to that. But anyway, that's it. As far as dancing without music is concerned, thank you for listening about my problems that I had. And I'm getting used to you all. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.